here on the Louisiana Hayride. His name is Hank Williams, the Drifting Cowboy. <laughs> on the Grand Ole Opry, Bill Monroe and his Bluegrass Boys. <laughs> Hi, this is Bruce Hornsby. Hi, this is Kevin Moe. Hey, folks, this is Bela Fleck. Hi, folks, this is Sam Bush. Hello, this is Odetta. This is Joan Baez, and you're listening to the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour. And now, gather the family around and sit back in your easy chair. It's time again for the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour, our worldwide celebration of grassroots music. Let's welcome folk singer, author, and tree hugger, Michael Jonathan.
so much. This broadcast of the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour is supported in part by First Colony Coffee and Tea Company. You can browse their full collection of coffee and teas like the organic Rainforest Morning Blend or the Ghirardelli chocolate flavored coffees in stores nationwide or online at firstcolonycoffee.com. And by Kentucky Tourism. You can explore the hundreds of rivers, lakes, mountain parks, horse farms, state parks, museums, music festivals and vacation destinations across Kentucky online at kentuckytourism.com. And welcome to the historic Kentucky Theater. Here we are in our hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. We're at the crossroads of America's folk and bluegrass music. You don't have to be famous to be on wood songs. You just have to be good. This is a celebration of grassroots music on our stage, whether it's folk or blues, bluegrass, country, and Celtic. All kinds of artists from all over the world come here to introduce themselves to you, the audience. Ultimately, you are the most important part of a musician's life. You are the most important part of an artist's career. You are the most important part of the music business. And so really Wood Songs is an acknowledgement and celebration of the importance of the audience. The first artists that are on our stage, young people, teenagers, they have magnificent harmonies. When I heard their record, I was just overwhelmed by how very professional and very fluid they are. They've really got that wonderful family sound. They've got an album called When Forever Rolls Around. They're going to introduce themselves with a wonderful song called Just a Promise. Please welcome the Lovell Sisters Band on the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio. <laughs> Sisters, just a promise, the pride of Calhoun, Georgia. Let's say hi to the, uh, the uh, dobro player. Megan, you're, you're 17 years old. Yes. And you play the, uh, the dobro so fluidly. And I know your hero is Jerry Douglas. Oh, yes. yes. So, so when did you become interested in the dobro? And why a young teenage girl and the dobro? 
Well, I heard it for the first time about three and a half years ago, probably. And um, we were taking lessons from a guy in Chattanooga for guitar and um, mandolin. And um, I saw the dobro and heard it for the first time. I just fell in love with it. I knew I wanted to play it. And you just tore into it, right? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's say hi to uh, Jessica playing the uh, fiddle, of course. Now, you are performing the show, and you have a little bit of a rasp in your voice. It actually sounds good on you. <laughs> Just a teensy tad. Now, you, uh, you are a classically trained violin player. And, of course, the fiddle and the violin is the same instrument. A lot of the audience sometimes will get confused about that. But when did you, when, I don't want to say leave the classical world behind, but, but you made the fiddle and bluegrass music a dominant part of your musical life. Well, we actually heard bluegrass for the first time about three and a half years ago, like she was saying. And uh, it was at that time that I actually decided to switch, to switch over. Because when we heard it, it just... And it's so heartfelt in the moment, and also the improv is just really cool. So, so you just like the freedom, the, the, the fact that you're not a slave to the note. To the sheet music, too. Yeah, so, well, that's where it's written down, isn't it? <laughs> Let's say hi to the mandolin player. Now, Hello. you 15 years old. Yes, sir. You just play me something on the mandolin. Just, just one way, I want to make sure your mic's up. How do you learn to play like that at 15 years old? I don't know. I have a lot to learn still, obviously, but I, I, I learned a lot from DVDs, actually. Homespun Tapes is our friend. So, <laughs> so you watch the Chris Thiele tape and oh, you just yes. go over and over and he teaches you how he does his licks. And, oh, yeah. And I ha pretty much had that playing 24-7. Really? Yeah, for really? a so, couple years there. <laughs> so the same thing, though. You're classically trained. Yes, sir. Right. Actually, we all started on classical violin when we were about three years old. And then just recently, we heard, we heard bluegrass. I actually started out on banjo. When we first got into bluegrass, I took banjo for a year or so, and then I heard the mandolin, and it was all over for me. I was bitten. You were bitten, you got the bluegrass bug. Now, the, the Lovell Sisters as a group, you got, a, you got your CD, When Forever Rolls Around. When did you decide to take it so seriously that you would become a sisters band? I guess that would have had to been sometime last year when we got to go on Garrison Keillor's A Prairie Home Companion mm -hmm. for the Teen Talent Contest. And we actually ended up winning it, and it gave us so many opportunities. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess that's really what kicked us into gear, because so many people were calling and asking us to, you know, come play at their venues. And so Blessed you, with opportunities like coming on on this program as well. Oh, Woodson. Exactly. Well, yeah. Well, I'm sure uh, Garrison Keeler's jealous. So, <laughs> let's get back into your music, okay? Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, Rebecca, 15 years old, you wrote a song that's not recorded yet. Not yet. Right, but we're going to go ahead and uh, check out brand new music. It's uh, the Lovell Sisters, the, the song is breaking. It's the Lovell Sisters on the Woods Songs, Old Time Radio. <laughs> for me to handle now my key is in the door of this old empty house i'm locking up the memory of our shattered vows my heart's still there but you don't care you're tearing it in two and i can feel it just break about you and I never know just what to say I think about you all the time I wish I didn't but you all go away now my key is in the door of this old empty house I'm locking up a memory of our shattered vows my heart's still there but you don't care you're tearing it in two 
song breaking the level sisters now I'm not gonna let this go let me, let me talk to Rebecca again come come to the microphone Hello. 15 years old yes sir <laughs> is this a bad thing <laughs> no 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 it's a, no it's a good where, where on earth does the idea of the breakups and empty vows and, and, the, and the, <laughs> you're 15 I know I actually never had a boyfriend I can't even drive a car so I read a lot, and I guess I have a pretty good imagination of how things might be. Sweetie, you're a divorce waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no! So, so go through the process. You, you, where you got the idea for the song. Mm -hmm. You want to write a breakup song. Well, I actually, I started writing the melody first. I kind of heard that in my head. I wrote the verse first, and I, I really thought it sounded kind of sad. And then I was, I was up in my room, and I started writing the chorus, and it had that one lick, the, you know, da 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 da, -da that one part. And I got the door idea with the key and the door, and then it just kind of, it kind of grew into it a went beast. went from there. Yes. Well, it's a beautiful song, and it's oh, so you. well arranged, and you guys performed it so well. If you want to know more about the Lovell Sisters, just go to woodsongs.com, click on the general store. This is show number 408. We'll let you know everything you need to know about the Lovell Sisters, how to contact them, make their CD part of your home music collection, and that of our very next artist who hails from the uh, great state of Washington. He's a monster slide guitarist right now, though he's going to finger pick some stuff. He's got a beautiful record out called Toonsmith Retrofit. He's an awesome guy. It's a song called Crow's Nest. Please welcome Kelly Joe Phelps to the Wood Songs, Old Town Radio. Hour. So come along to the riverside and sit down now. I just want to hear somebody else whine If you've got tomorrow, I've got a blade We can dig a hole into an old book And keep our secrets there And I know of another place that needs some overgrown vine. I can cut them back on and help you down. And there are listen to every song you know. I 
will clap when you are through. And maybe then I will kiss you. And maybe then I will kiss you. Kelly Joe Phelps, brand new record on Rounder Records, Toon Smith Retrofit. Kelly, nice to have you here. Thanks very much. Beautiful sounding guitar. This is a great guitar. Yeah, tell us about your guitar, Martin guitar. Yeah, it's a triple O twenty eight EC, which stands for Eric Clapton. I just this is my uh, I bought this about I bought it back in March, and. Uh, I, I love it. It's a great guitar. And you're you're playing uh, no finger picks on your uh, All right, yeah, just bare man. fingers, bare no fingernails or picks. But you've got a nice crisp attack. Yeah, I, um, I, yeah. I, I went straight from I I, I learned on uh, using fingernails like a classical player. Maybe or, or well, I actually have a lot of steel string playing friends that use fingernails. But then I went to finger picks, and then I went straight from there to just bare fingers. And I, the <clears throat> the main thing was trying to figure out how to get enough volume mm -hmm. and attack out of it. And so. I had I had to bleed on the guitar for a couple of months, and then it was just a matter of getting calluses, you know, like on your left hand, and, and so I, I sort of figured out how to play guitar. You know. Well, a lot of guys that or and, and girls that play with the bare fingers, the, the strings tend to thud, mm -hmm. and, and they don't have that ring. Yours has that nice crisp ring, so that's a, that's a hard thing to for a guitarist to develop. Now you uh, like like the Level Sisters, who uh, had a lot of music in their home and started uh, learning music when they were very 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 young. You as well. Your dad had a big influence on your musical life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both my mom and dad played music. Uh, they still do a bit, but um, when I was growing up, I heard at least half of the music that I heard as a kid was them playing it. You know, and I have an older brother as well who plays guitar, and um, at least at some point every single day, mm -hmm. I think, as far as I can remember, they were playing. You know, either together or individually, and, and uh, wasn't. I mean, you know, maybe 20 minutes or something. I mean, it was something that. In particular, my dad used to do at, you know after work he'd come home and and take a shower and shave for the second time that day and uh, and then play the <laughs> piano a little bit you know now you uh, you're getting quite a great reputation as a as a blues guitarist and a blues singer songwriter Americana blues influence but you you your early music was very jazz influenced mm -hmm. so how the, the the change from the coal trains and stuff over to 
what you're doing now. How'd that come about? Well, it's it's as far as I'm concerned, it, it's it was a pretty simple process, really. I, um, you know, like a lot of musicians, I, I'm I'm pretty much self-taught. Uh, you know, within reason. I didn't spend much money on lessons, but I was always around musicians and learning. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I seem to be able to spend as much time as I need to in a, in a space, a musical space, to, to pull things out of it that make sense to me and leave other things behind and just move on. But those, you know, those are blocks of time that might be anywhere from three or four years to ten years. Um, and then it, it's just a matter of adding and adding and adding. So I, I've never felt like I... I played a certain kind of music and then stopped and decided to play a different kind of music. I always feel like I'm adding to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it comes out in the end. So there's things I, things I do musically that I wouldn't have done had I not spent as much time as I have uh, spent uh, playing jazz music or, you know, for that matter, listening to people like Norman Blake and, and Doc Boggs or, you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And, and you know, the Coltrane's and Miles Davis and... and this, you know, all that stuff adds up in the end. I mean, I even took, you know, saxophone lessons and trumpet lessons and stuff, you know, and given points. Not because I was necessarily going to do that with my life, but um, it felt like, it so seemed like it was important, you know. Part of the musical experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, all of this uh, experience and these influences are very well represented on your new record, on Rounder Records, Toonsmith Retrofit. We're going to go into a song called The Anvil. Mm -hmm. It's Kelly Joe Phelps on the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio Hour. There are some that are blindly and happily plow While the tractor screams feed me some old Scraping of gears in the gnashing of teeth Fall softly on full head ears A frown may give away something right A smile Hide crooked affairs When the sun on her back Rings a workman's guffaw It's all in the bag With the coins Call me tomorrow, then come over here and see if we can figure this out. There in an eye, winking curiously by the campground, the bedside nightstand. My leg bones feel weary and walk on a well, holding four wheels and on a plate full of nothing but shaking my head With a side bowl of nothing Of nothing to do Could be a time thing and it could be a rose And I will concede to confusion The ideas spin round my crazy old head Hard as and light as an anvil The liver will wither and wax with the tide Find if I can find the answer To a question I've never been asked before That I hear time and time And time again Ooh, oh, oh, oh.
Kelly Jo Phelps. It's a brand new CD on Rounder Records, Toonsmith Retrofit. We've got an absolutely wonderful broadcast in process. We're going to get back to Kelly Jo Phelps. The Lovell Sisters are here. Absolutely wonderful teenage uh, performers. If you love bluegrass music, just stay tuned. We've got another great half hour to go right after this. You're listening to Woodsong Show number 408, presented in part by First Colony Coffee and Tea Company, Kentucky Tourism, plus hundreds of Woodsong's radio partners from around the world. And by Kentucky Proud and the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. For information on how Kentucky-grown farm products are used worldwide and in your hometown is available online at KentuckyProud.com. We'll be back in 60 seconds with more of the Woodsong's Old Time Radio Hour. Our show is supported in part by Sing Out Magazine, on the web at singout.org, by Audio-Technica Microphones, by Galaxy Audio, makers of the hotspot-powered monitors, and by QCA, providing compact disc, CD-ROM, DVD, cassette, and vinyl record manufacturing to independent artists and small labels for over a half century. Information about QCA is available on our website at woodsongs.com. Did you know this broadcast of Woodsongs is available as a podcast? Do you know who's coming up on future shows? The Woodsongs email newsletter is sent each week to tens of thousands of people worldwide who love folk, bluegrass, blues and new artists. Information about the weekly Woodsongs email newsletter is available on our website at woodsongs.com. Hi, this is Amy Ray of the Indigo Girls, and you are exploring the world of grassroots music with folk singer Michael Jonathan on the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour. Thank you so much, Amy. Here's a, here's a Georgia artist, Indigo Girls. Behind me, the Folk Bowl Orchestra fires up and plays, and we are so grateful that so many people are tuning in around the world to our broadcast. We have so many radio stations that have uh, joined our musical family. S uh, two Cow FM in Casino, New South Wales, Australia is on board with us. The great station KISU 91.1 FM, Idaho State University Radio. So many great stations that are supporting our efforts to introduce grassroots artists around the world and one of the things that this show likes to encourage is performance of uh, independent musicians in your own hometown in your communities and one of the ways that we help our audience to do that is by a program called the Wood Songs Coffee House and a lot of folks that go to our website they get to see the uh, Wood Songs Coffee House is available and I thought I'd just take a minute to explain what this is and he here's an example of an email that we got just this past week about the Woodsongs Coffee House. It says, Dear Michael, I heard about your idea of organizing hundreds of performance venues and coffee houses across the United States and Canada, and I want to be part of it. There are so many great musicians and artists and such a big audience out there that really loves folk and grassroots music of all kinds. I'd be very interested in setting up a Woodsongs Coffee House in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Please send me the information, Dr. Alan Lane in Tuscaloosa. Well, Dr. Lane, he listens to WUAL Alabama Public Radio 91.5 in his hometown where Wood Songs is on the air. And it's really very simple. You may have a large living room. The Wood Songs Coffee House in Las Vegas, Nevada 
They do it in a big garage that they've converted into a 50-seat concert hall. Uh, so many places in your hometown, it could be a coffee house that's already there, or a cafe, sometimes a school cafeteria. A lot of folks will use a church basement or something like that, but a place to gather folks around and once a month, once every couple months, just go real easy on yourself. You invite brilliant artists like the Lovell Sisters or Kelly Jo Phelps into your home community where people can come and listen to them live and in person, just like we do here in our Kentucky theater, so many hundreds of people come to every broadcast. But in your hometown, you can start your own hometown Wood Songs coffee house. Just go to our website, woodsongs.com. We'll let you know more information about that. I hope you do it. Let's listen to the Folk Boy Orchestra play behind me. Scott Napier on the mandolin, Ben Soli and Lisa Tchaikovsky, both playing cello tonight. The Level Sisters are here. So many uh, great musicians in the band. Of course, Jessica plays fiddle and Megan plays dobro. Rebecca plays mandolin, the youngest of the group. But you've got this 16-year-old kid playing guitar. And we're going to ask him to play a couple licks for him. Jake Stargell on the acoustic guitar. How you do that. <laughs> so, Megan, where did you all find Jake? Well, Jake just started with us a couple of months ago, actually, probably four months ago. And um, we were playing with this guitar player called Roy Curry, who's a national champion. And uh, he had picked with Jake at IBMA, and he was saying how amazing he was. And so we called him up and Thank goodness for us, he was available. And there he is. Well, I think the audience just is amazed that this 16-year-old boy <laughs> can pick the guitar like Tony Rice. And there on the uh, bass is the non-teenager <laughs> playing the uh, upright bass, Andy Nall on the bass. Why don't you play us a couple of weeks? There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, now, everybody, uh, uh, Megan, uh, everybody's from Georgia. Yes, and Calhoun, Georgia. Yeah, so, so it's like a, like a kind of a, almost like a whole family group with you guys. Uh-huh. So let me, let me talk some more about the process of taking a song and turning it into the level sister sound. I mean, uh, Jessica, you, you handle a lot of the lead vocals. So how, you all sit around, you get this great idea for a song. Your 15-year-old sister writes a devastatingly brutal breakup song, and you say, <laughs> well, how mature. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put that into the act or something. So what's the process of rehearsing and deciding who sings what and how the songs are put together? Well, I guess we get together, and um, somebody has an idea for a song like Rebecca. And um, so we'll, we'll start working on it. Everybody kind of give their opinion. and. Uh, Everybody does have their own opinion, we've noticed. We, especially having three sisters in the group, mm -hmm. it gets quite interesting at times, I would say. Well, let's talk about how interesting it gets. Because <laughs> most sisters, most siblings, you know, brothers and sisters, it's a normal family thing. It's usually not physical. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't see any noticeable bruises or scars, so I felt <laughs> comfortable asking. So what's it, what is it like for you, the mandolin player? You feel strongly about a certain line and the others are going, eh. Well, I think it has to do a lot with compromise. I think you have to, you know, know that you enjoy your idea personally, but you also have to, you know, make sure that everyone else in the band enjoys it as well, because if they don't, then, you know, how are you going to ever play it on stage with the enthusiasm and passion that you need, you know? So how do you do that? Explain that to the audience. Because, ah. because basically what you're describing, I mean, you have your actual family life, but bands are like families. So really you have two families with the same parts going on. You have a business, you have a music family, then you have your actual family. How do you merge all that together? Well, I think just right now it's interesting how the three of us chose different instruments. 
And each, each one of us feels really comfortable with that instrument. We don't want to play, like I don't want to play dobro, that's Megan's thing. Mm -hmm. And when we get together for a practice, rehearsal, it just kind of falls together like that. You know, I'll have an idea and either they like it or they don't, and then if they don't like it, we move on. And eventually, usually later than sooner, uh, we come up with something that, that works together. Um, but what you were talking about earlier is interesting as well, because you have to kind of put aside some time to practice and focus on the music and not focus on sisterly things, <laughs> which is easier said than done. Delicately said, yeah, yeah. So what do you do with the band member that goes, you know, I'm all for compromising, but doggone it, I'm compromising more than you. <laughs> That's when you smack them and say, grow up! <laughs> I'm sure. Not. <laughs> There's the violence thing again. Okay, well, let's, <laughs> let's go back into your CD, When Forever Rolls Around. Um, when was this recorded? Back in September of last year, we yeah. actually went up to Nashville and recorded it with Brent Truitt, mm -hmm. who is a, a great mandolin player. He's played with the Dixie Chicks and Allison Krauss, and he actually co-produced this with it, and we really enjoyed doing it. It was our first time in the studio. We think it really turned out pretty well, though. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's what I want the audience to uh, really try to understand. You've only been doing this bluegrass thing for about three years. You were classically trained before then, and, 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 and you know, Megan on the Dobro is kind of new at it, you know, just a couple of years. And, and, and you know, Rebecca, you're winning championships on the uh, mandolin, but how long have you been playing the mandolin? About two and a half years. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, now you're first time in the studio, but you sound so experience that. You sound so mature at it. So, I mean, that must represent a lot of hours in your living room playing and playing and playing. I think we all really enjoy it. I think it is definitely, music has always been a big part of our lives. Like, you know, Kelly Joe was saying, and, you know, it, basically, you know, you wake up in the morning and you go eat breakfast, then you go in your room and you just play music because I think it really is all of our passion. So, you know, it's a labor of love. Well, let's get back into your labor of love. The CD is called When Forever Rolls Around. This is a song called Lonesome Feeling. It's the Lovell Sisters on the Woods songs, Old Time Radio. <laughs>
Well done. The Lovell Sisters. Kelly Jo Phelps is on our stage with his acoustic guitar. And I think uh, one of my singer-songwriter folk heroes is a guy named Dave Van Ronk. Mm -hmm. Most people haven't heard of Dave Van Ronk, and I know he was an influence on your music. Yeah, I've listened to him a long time. I remember a, uh, an older friend of mine, and I must have been 16, I think, um, and I had an older uh, friend who was a guitar player, and he knew a, a number of players that I didn't, and Dave Van Ronk was one of them, and I've been listening to him ever since, and uh, that was a very long time ago. Um, and uh, he was just fantastic, you know, I mean, he, he, uh, he wrote some, some cool tunes, but he, he spent most of the time um, adapting. Interpreting other yeah. songs, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was very broad what he, what he adapted. I mean, it, um, depending on how much you've listened to him, you might think he's a, you know, a ragtime sort of finger-picking guy, but, but man, he, he uh, spent a lot of time digging up amazing old folk music, and, and he was a big player in the, you know, the folk boom, mm -hmm. and the old Greenwich uh, village scene. And, uh, you know, he was a hero to, to most of those uh, people, you know, Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell and the, that whole scene. I mean, he was like the spokesperson, you know. He was sort of the ruler of Greenwich Village mm -hmm. there in the, in the early 60s. There was this uh, old music magazine, Broadside Magazine, mm -hmm. that uh, had a review of Dave Van Ronk and said he had a voice that sounded like a bottle of bad bourbon, <laughs> which is a, that, if you're a blues player, that's a very cool mm -hmm. review, to, review to have. But he, he passed away not too not too all that, that long ago, and he, he had a very rich, full musical life, but he did, Dave Van Ronk did influence a lot of players on how to perform to an audience, the kind of music to, to choose, and, and you've got a song on your, your record that's a tribute to Dave. Yep. And it's called McDougal, named after the street. Yeah, he was, street I guess that's, he was referred to as the mayor of McDougal Street. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and check it out. It's an instrumental from uh, Kelly's album. The song is McDougal, Kelly Joe Phelps on the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio Hour. Kelly Joe Phelps, his CD is Tune Smith Retrofit, tribute to uh, Dave and Rocket. You know, as you're playing that, you can really hear the influence on players like Paul Simon and Arlo Guthrie and, and so many others. Their, their picking style is really influenced by uh, Dave Van Ronk. Uh, Kelly has, a, has another wonderful song on his uh, album that's a tribute to uh, Chris Whitley, the wonderful 
player that we lost here recently as well called Handful of Arrows. So if you want to know more about Kelly Joe Phelps, his tour schedule, and how to make this wonderful CD your own, just go to woodsongs.com, click on the general store. This is show number 408. And here we are at the end of our broadcast. And what to do? We have a few minutes left. And so we thought we would take these, these fighting, arguing Glovel sisters. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We got the uh, mandolin player and the dobro player. We know the, the, all of them grew up playing classical music and violin and stuff. But uh, Rebecca is kind of new on the mandolin. And Megan is kind of new on the dobro. We thought we'd let them show off these new talents of theirs that's like 24 or 30 months old. <laughs> and so you're going to play <laughs> a classical piece. Yes, sir. On the, uh, don't call me sir. <laughs> <laughs> Bad habits. Well, life is bad enough. Don't age me like that. Okay, you're going to go dip into a classical repertoire. Mm -hmm. This is called Bach Invention Number no. 1 in C Major. You had me make sure I mentioned the C Major part. Yes. Is that like a it's classical important. thing? Why? Well, there's a lot of Bach inventions, and having the C Major on there really helps clarify which one it is. Oh, and the whole audience is going, oh, well, I'm glad they did that. <laughs> Right, so now, now, is this something that you learned as, from your classical years growing up? Yes, actually, this came from a piano book that we all actually took from. It was the big Bach invention book that he created to try and, you know, work on the dexterity between the two hands when you're playing piano. So we kind of worked those two hands. I played the treble part, Megan played the bass part. So this is probably one of the first times that uh, mandolin and dobro have ever been used to play a Bach invention. Now, just, just <laughs> curious here. Which one of you three plays the piano? We all three do. Of course you do, yes. <laughs> Why did I ask? All right, so Rebecca is on the mandolin. Megan is on the dobro. Bach convention number one, of course, in C major. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old Rebecca on the mandolin, Megan, seventeen years old, on the dobro. Jessica, of course, fiddle-playing master that she is, the Level Sisters. Wasn't it great having them here on the show? We want to thank a Andy Nall on bass and sixteen-year-old Jake Stargell on the acoustic guitar. Just doing a great job for them. Wasn't it awesome having Kelly Joe Phelps on the show. If you're like me, you listen to the Lovell sisters and you are just amazed at, you know, 15 years old, she's only been playing this thing for 24 months and she's doing Bach things in C major and, and all this stuff and writing 
breakup songs that rip your heart out, and she's 15 years old. And, and you listen to Kelly Joe Phelps' experience, how important his dad was and his mom, you know, to him being experienced around music. And he described his music as an ongoing process. For a while it was jazz, then it was the slide guitar, and now he's developed this very crisp, clean finger-picking style with his bare fingers, something that's very, very difficult to accomplish. And, and there's so much exploration in music and it is its freest when it's not bound to a chart. It's its freest when it's not marketed into a pigeonhole. It's its freest when it's allowed to express itself and allow the audience to decide if they love it or not. That's where you come in. That's what we said at the, at the beginning of the show. The most important part of an artist's life is the audience. It's you. There would be no wood songs if not for you. There would be no Lovell sisters performing on stages if there was not you. Kelly Jo Phelps wouldn't be on the road and enjoying a CD release with Rounder Records. There'd be no Rounder Records if it was not for you. So when you sit back and you enjoy the brilliance of these young people like the Lovell sisters or the wonderful songwriting skills of Kelly Jo Phelps, if you feel left out, you're missing the important point of how important you are to what they do. You're just as much a part of the music experience as the artist on stage. My name is Michael Jonathan. I am a folk singer. I am a tree hugger. We'll see you next week on the Wood Songs Old Time. You've been listening to show number 408. Michael's opening song is Shenandoah from Woodsong CD. The Folk Boy Orchestra is Scott Napier on mandolin, Ben Solly and Lisa Shvekovsky on cello. Our chief engineer is Kevin Darth Fader Johnson. Technical assistants are Brian Clausing, Brandon Eves, Adrian Reese, Eric Anderson and Jerome Gaunt. The Woodsong's crew is Casey Campbell, Connie Harrison, Larry Sturr, Dr. Bob and Mary Martina. Glenn Wilson, Mim King, Marie Wilson, Mitchell Miller, Scott Getzinger, Lil Shulman, Todd Fields, Annie Belding, Sam Pedno, and of course, Judge Ray Corns. The Wood Songs TV and webcast is presented by Inside Communications, directed by Jim Piston. The webcast and television crew includes Lisa Sorg, Brian Connors Mankey, Kurt Jefferson, Chris Cheney, Jewel Lawson, Diane Donahue, Adam Katz, Jennifer Ziegler, and Camilla Olson. Our website is hosted by QX.net and designed by Scott Clark at SiteCreations.com. Special thanks to Natasha's Cafe, Bourbon and Toulouse, Highbridge Springwater and the Linden House Bed and Breakfast. Guest artists stay at the historic Graz Park Inn, home of Southern Hospitality and Jonathan's Restaurant. This program is produced with the support of Insight Communications and WUKY, University of Kentucky Public Radio. Wood Songs and the Wood Song Symbol are registered trademarks of Rachel Aubrey Music. Thanks for listening. I'm Joe Conkright. And for Michael Jonathan and the entire Woodsongs crew, this is Stacey Brothwell. We hope you'll join us again next week for the Woodsongs Old Time Radio Hour.